During the muscle car era of the 1960s, American automakers faced the challenge of satisfying consumer demand for smaller, more fuel-efficient vehicles. Oldsmobile, determined to retain its V8 power while improving fuel economy, pioneered a groundbreaking solution, turbocharging. In this video, we'll explore the Oldsmobile Jetfire, which was the world's first turbocharged production car. We'll delve into the muscle car scene of the time, the benefits of the Jetfire engine, its performance specifications, and the critical flaw that ultimately hindered its success. In the early 1960s, American consumers were increasingly drawn to smaller, lighter, and more efficient cars from Europe. Models like the Mini and VW Beetle gained popularity due to their affordability and superior fuel efficiency compared to the thirsty American V8s of the era. However, Oldsmobile, not willing to abandon its V8 heritage, sought a way to counter this trend. They turned their attention to the F85 Cutlass, one of their smaller offerings, which featured a relatively modest 3.5-litre V8 engine. To enhance fuel economy without compromising the performance expected from a V8, Oldsmobile teamed up with Garrett Corporation, a renowned manufacturer of industrial turbochargers. Together they developed a special automotive turbocharger known as the D5, with a smaller diameter and optimized pipework for the internal combustion engines. This co-development led to the birth of the 215 horsepower turbo rocket engine installed in the Jetfire, and it brought a revolution in performance with it. It delivered an additional 30% torque compared to the non turbocharged version, generating 300 foot pounds of torque by 3200 rpm, and 280 foot pounds of torque was available from just 2000 rpm. With these power gains, the Jetfire accelerated from 0 to 60 nearly twice as quickly as the base model and reached 100 miles per hour in a remarkable 10 seconds faster than the non turbo siblings. It was a force to be reckoned with on the streets, and it seemed like this engine was the answer Oldsmobile was looking for. But while the Jetfire engine showcased impressive performance, it encountered two significant challenges. First, the suspension system remained unchanged from the standard cutlass, resulting in a wobbly, uncomfortable and unstable ride, which isn't great when you take the other performance increases into account. But that's not even the bad part. The second flaw with the Jetfire engine was that it required a unique solution to prevent detonation or engine knock. And knock is bad. Knock happens when the air fuel mixture in the combustion chamber ignites spontaneously or prematurely before the spark plug fires. Instead of a controlled burn initiated by the spark plug, the uncontrolled combustion creates a knocking or pinging sound, hence the name engine knock. And everything in an engine is timed precisely, so let's say you have an ignition way too early, it can be catastrophic, and you could send a piston to the moon. So you had to use this new solution in the car. Now the solution would be thrown into a special tank. The solution itself was a mixture of methyl alcohol and water, known as rocket fluid, or just water meth. If you didn't know, people still use this in performance applications, as it raises octane levels and lowers combustion temperatures. And that's exactly what it was used for here. However, many owners neglected to refill the tank, leading to power loss and engine knock. In fact, many owners took their cars back to the dealership, stating that their cars felt weaker, and the problem would be that the tank was empty. The fuel injection system itself was also reportedly erratic, compounding the engine's issues. Now to give you an idea of how much people dislike this water meth system, many owners actually ended up retrofitting a four barrel carburetor and removing the system entirely. Now look, I also own a car that runs on water meth and it's really not that difficult to top it up. It is a hassle having to buy a different fuel and then every now and again shake and throw it in, but it's really not that bad and the added performance is worth the effort in my opinion. Now, because people disliked this design so much, the era of turbocharged engines in the United States was relatively short-lived, as consumer interest shifted back to large V8s by 1964. However, the Oldsmobile Jetfire is a cool classic to look back at. It shows us where turbocharging production costs started. And remember, most of the time, the first time we try something new, it needs to be bettered. But you have to start somewhere. Ultimately, the Oldsmobile Jetfire represented a bold and ambitious endeavor that was great on paper, but in reality, it just didn't work as well as expected. But let me know what you think. If this was your daily driver, would you go through the effort for said performance gains? Or would you rather just have a car that's a bit slower, but more reliable and less of a hassle to use? especially if it's your daily driver. So let me know down below. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like all of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?